Welcome here to our Classico preview, and if you haven't really noticed, I have got a cold. So, warming up for this weekend, of course, we've got a number of games in La Liga, but the one we're going to be focusing on this weekend is, of course, the Sunday match between Barcelona and Real Madrid live from the Santiago Bernabeu, which is El Clasico, and it's a very, very deciding match. I think whatever way you look at El Clasico, it's massive for both sides. I think coming into the game, of course, more of the pressure is on Barcelona because, of course, it's a game which both sides have got to go out there and perform for their fans, but more so Barcelona have to win in order to gain back some valuable points in the title race. So it's going to be a huge game, so much expectation, so many world-class players. You know, it's going to be 80,000 screaming fans inside the stadium. And of course, two of the best players in the world head-to-head -head against each other in Ronaldo and Messi. So certainly it's going to be a game which you'll see a lot of tactical uh, impl inclinations. You'll see a lot of um, squabbles, you see a lot of fights, tackles, you know, you'll see referees being under severe pressure from both managers, you'll see certain things in the papers beforehand, but certainly going into the game, I think we've got to respect that it's two world-class sides at the moment going head-to-head -head against each other with 22 world-class players on the pitch, and it'll be, it'll be that kind of game, I think it'll be a game which is very, very tight, very, very congested in the midfield area, I certainly think Barcelona will come there and put a marker down and certainly feel as though they're going there and going to go and dominate the game in the midfield, going to have possession for a lot of the game. Madrid will be quite happy to sit back and uh, absorb a lot of the pressure as long as they don't concede and then hit Barca on the counter-attack. Um, certainly I think Pique and Mascherano, as they did against City the other week, will have to have a very good game against the BBC, apparently, uh, in Ronaldo, Benzema and Bale. Uh, Benzema looks on course to be fit for the game, although it's not quite decided. Hesse certainly ruled out with that cruciate ligament injury yesterday, picked up against Schalke. He could be out for around six months with that injury, a really bad knock for a young man coming into his game and performing really well this season. Uh, but certainly for Barca fans, it will be a game that you go into with a lot of belief, a lot of um, you know confidence, certainly after the week we've just had. Um, there's also soon uh, the 7-0 demolition of them. There's been a game against Man City, which has been a very important game to get through with the quarterfinals of the Champions League. But certainly for Madrid as well, it's not been all bad. Certainly they didn't play their best against Malaga, but certainly against Schalke, they may have only won 3-1. They had the Clasico in mind. They uh, rested a lot of players there. Ronaldo scoring twice, and Alvaro Morata, who if Benzema isn't fit, could be called upon. He came into the side and scored a goal. So it's going to be a game which is going to have defining moments. And certainly I think whoever scores the first goal will give a massive, massive lift to the entire side. And they'll take that momentum throughout the uh, entire 90 minutes. And I think that it's going to be one which is impossible to predict. Because anything can happen on the day. There can be certain decisions which doesn't go your way. Certain um, you know injuries or suspensions you know that go the way of Real Madrid or Barca. Certainly, Angelotti in the first classical of this season decided to sort of tinker with the formation and play Sergio Ramos in midfield. That backfired. So I don't think we'll see any rash decisions from either manager. Tano Martino has got more of a variety to choose from than Real Madrid, despite Real Madrid having the larger and probably better squad than Barcelona at the moment. Uh, but certainly Tano Martino can go with the original 4-3-3 with the three uh, front, Messi in the middle and the two wide players, or he could go with the side that had been playing against Man City, which is the sort of four midfielders with Cesc Fabregas being brought into the side. So he's got a little uh, alternation there that he can choose from. Uh, Carlo Angelotti will probably go with the 4-3-3, um, he's you know going to go with uh, Cavallo a right back and probably Marcelo at left back with the two centre backs being Pepe and Ramos. Varane uh, back from injury now, but not quite uh, being as consistent this season, of course, because it's been disrupted by injury. Then Pepe who's in the centre back position. You'll then go with Alonso. Big big test for Di Maria in midfield. You know, a centre midfielder who at the moment this season has been very very good, very consistent there, because it's not his actual position. But uh, certainly it'll be a very very big game for him, tested to the full. Uh, with the likes of Xavier Iniesta in Barca's midfield. Uh, then you've got Modric, very, very, very good season for that young man. Um, you know, the Croatian came in last season, wasn't really firing on all cylinders at the start of his career, but certainly now he's found his feet and he's a really, really accomplished player. Um, then you've got the BBC, as I said, Karim Benzema, Cristiano Ronaldo and Gareth Bale, who've been in devastating form this season. So looking at Barca, you've got Valdez in goal, right back Dani Alves, Piquet Mascherano, preferred departure, of course. 
uh, left back Jordi Alba, Busquets, Xavi, Iniesta. I think he'll stick with the traditional 4-3-3. I really do. I think we'll see Neymar return. I think he didn't play any minutes against us sooner, and certainly now he'll come into the side. But it's who plays in Atlantis and in Pedro. That's a really, really interesting one. I think he might go with Pedro because he's a big game player, he, you know, very, very clinical in front of goal. Certainly I would probably would start Pedro, but I might start Alexis as well, you know. I think Neymar maybe quite, quite haven't quite earned the right to start this game, but certainly be used off the bench and same for Fabregas really if he's not involved from the start. And of course Lila Messi, who's been prolific throughout twenty fourteen, will start in the centre of attack for Barcelona. So it's gonna be a massive game for both sides, huge pressure on both of them. Barcelona have to go there and win. They can't draw or lose the game. So certainly it's there for Barcelona to win. If they score the first goal, it's going to be really tough for Madrid to come back because Barcelona will try and pick them off, try and outnumber the midfield. But certainly on the counter-attack, do not write Real Madrid off. But I think Madrid will be second best. They won't be able to have any possession in this game. They will be pushed to the front. They will be pressed by Barcelona. They'll bring the pressing game back. I think anyone who's actually made a prediction regarding this match, you know, is a very, very brave person. Because I think both these sides on their day, when they're playing as well as they can, they both got their tactics down to a tier. I think they can both take any club team in world football. So I think certainly this game will attract so many viewers. So many great players will be on the pitch. And I think it's certainly a very, very interesting one to predict. I'm not going to throw myself in and predict a scoreline but certainly I will promise you this it'll be a phenomenal match between Real Madrid and Barcelona